Have a good morning, Milo. How are you doing? Hello, everybody. Whoever's watching. Anybody wants to watch. Just doing our appear on a Dewalt nail gun. This is the DCN 692. Common problem. Just clicking instead of shooting. Put her against the timber, pull the trigger, instead of making a bang. She's just making a clicking sound. Clicking's from the solenoid inside. Draws back on the axis to drop down on top of the pan to fire the nail. And then drops down on top of the flywheel, shoots. The clicking's is the solenoid activating. But nothing's happening after that. So if it does that, first of all check your springs. Light one tonight is right, hey? First one, check your springs, make sure they're intact. This can also happen if your springs are broken. These ones are fine. Next thing you get onto then is the axis inside the gun. That's where you're going to the money. That's your Dewalt nail gun inside. Looks complicated, there's actually not a lot to them. One big motor. The pun gun, if you're looking for the second fix for the pun gun, wouldn't really recommend the Dewalt anyway, they're not that great. Why a lot of people are actually recommending the Ryobi? Simply because it's a lot cheaper. Batteries seem to be all right. The price of the Dewalt, you buy two or three of the Ryobi probably. And they're lasting just as long, to be quite honest. So if you're looking for a cheaper one, check out the Ryobi one. But otherwise, any of the wee cheaper nailers is going to be the best option for a cheaper gun. Dewalt's all right, but they're not that reliable. They eventually need a fair bit of work. And definitely don't be going for the Makita. So inside this gun, you've got a flywheel which is basically your motor. Outside rest of your motor is actually a flywheel. Controller here. Speed controller, battery, wiring the whole setup. That speed controller runs the motor. Gets that running full speed. This is an axis on top. Solenoid in the back of it. Once you pull, push this against a workpiece, motor starts up. Whenever you pull your trigger, the solenoid activates, pulls back. Pulls back on this lever. Which drops down this roller, which forces your driver blade down on top of the spinning motor, this spinning flywheel. And friction grabs it then and shoots it. So it's basically just throwing, that's all it's doing. That's why oil is a bad option for any of these here guns. Once oil gets on that driver or flywheel, game over, forget about the gun. Dump it, it's never gonna shoot, it's not ever, never gonna sink another nail again. But eventually, for some reason, these guns, the axis eventually wears out on them. This part here, she's on tight. Why is this one so tight? Doesn't want to come out at all. What is that hung up on? They just pull up. Topical. Get the awkward one on live video.
That was jammed on. I don't even see what it's jammed on. Crikey, that was tight. Must have been glue or something got onto that. Something made her tight anyway. Now, everything's run on, that, on that's gone. So the only thing we need to deal with is this axis. Slacking off them wires. Give yourself some rim. Torx Allen keys. T20. Slacking off these counter sunk bolts at the back. Have one of these in stock. There's a lot of wiggling to get this thing out at times. This is an awkward wee space. So we need to free the wires. That's your axis. And to be honest, Dewalt have went and shot themselves in the foot again with this design again. That axis for me to buy in is about 85 euro. It's roughly it's about 100 quid to buy that axis here. Ah, turnaround time and a pass load. If you're doing well, you'll get it done about an hour, say. Problem with this here now with Dewalt, instead of this axis coming on its own, and just reusing the solenoid, they're now selling it with the solenoid. So you're out even more money again maintaining these guns. They're just getting to the point now where they're not worth maintaining. Pull that solenoid out, pull the spring out. That's your, that's your axis. So whenever that solenoid fires, she pulls us back. I'm not focusing. Pulls this back and drops down this here roller. Forces that roller down. And that's what gives traction on your pan for your on your flywheel. But something on them eventually wears. And they just start to lose pressure. going off. I have used my last one. Nope. Tell the light. One left. Counter sunk screws. That's my last one. Must remember to order that tomorrow. Reinstall, put your spring back in, put your solenoid back in, there's teeth on that side, we notches that lock into here. So that's the side that goes on first, or which way it faces. And line up that wheat pan for the middle. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, Mark, not a lot goes on to the spares, to be honest. Most of, the thing, most of the toilet can't be fixed. Just goes back to the customer anyway. I'm glad you enjoy them. If you hear people saying that they enjoy the find these videos relaxing. And again, getting this in again. Can be awkward. Bit of fiddling, toss it, give it a wee wiggle. Eventually it'll work its way back in again. A wee wiggle and a jiggle. These screws should come with Loctite, but they don't anymore. So put a wee dab on. Because you don't want them backing out. But apart from that, there's not an awful lot to go wrong with these guns. The axe is the main thing. Other thing is the springs, and after that you'll be eventually needing to change the driver. And if you have it a very long time, you'll have to change the motor eventually. And you'll know when you need to change the motor because the thing will sound like a jet engine ticking off. So you can get very loud. Make sure they're good and tight. Another thing I've seen failing in these recently, these actual support brackets on either side, they snap here. That's on the newer guns. For some reason they're breaking. I don't really know why. Because they never really broke, broke on the older versions. Uh, cheers, Paul. Seems to be getting a wee bit of traction on the old channel. Seems to be getting a wee bit more popular, which is nice to see. That whole frame there, I know it looks very complicated, but there's not much on it. That's your controller, that just slides in. One bolt there that goes through that holds it together. Either side then, this black piece is a frame. It doesn't wrap around, it's two separate pieces. Motor then bolts onto it. Axis and solenoids on top of it. Then you've got a front cone then with a few other wee bits and pieces on it. They look complicated inside. But once you open one or two of them, you realise there's not a lot to them. Older second fax D volt gun would have been more complicated than these here. Now well, you have to start smart car boot sale is the best place, good of places in it. Which one's watching this one now? I think it's that way.
I never look. That way. The only thing that can go is the switch in these. And the switch is part of the whole thing. Controller. Switch, micro switch, switch and controller itself. Can't replace this on its own. If it ever does start giving you bother, you can just clean it out. Uh, the bearings in Milwaukee aren't that bad as long as you're aware of them. Now you'll hear the note change in the Milwaukee grinder. Apart from that bearing, the Milwaukee grinder is actually quite good. It's just a fact there's a wee cheap bearing on them. So once you hear them sort of growling a wee bit or making any sort of noise, it's not normal. Just get the bearing changed. The bearings on the Milwaukee, mm, bearing press makes it easier, but to be honest, they're that small, it's hard to get an actual wee bearing hold or small enough for them. The easiest way to get them off is generally hold it in the vise, pry by either side or two good screwdrivers and prise it off. And if the bearing's already gone, you can just grind it off like I've done in other videos. That'll work just as well. Back, would you slide them? A sharp edge in that. Better. A quick test. We cordless Dewalt router. If you're having problems with that, that we speed controller, the actual wheel can break off sometimes, or else the connection can come away. So you have to actually open it up to get to it. More than likely, that's the problem. You can buy the wheel speed controller on its own if it does go, but getting that thing apart is actually pretty difficult. Give us a quick test. And as 
you can hear, she shits. This thing as well, if you're working on them, mind the fingies. Because that gets you a few times. And that's one done. That's the last D-wall tonight anyway because I have no more access to, accesses to be honest. Quick clean and move on to the next one. Put that aside. Dewalt drill and just a chuck. That's an odd one. Well, no, it's not an odd one. It's a common one for this one actually. Hammer mode. Non hammer mode, just normal drill mode. Jammed on hammer mode. Easy tool for a beginner, something like this here. Cordless drill is generally quite simple. As long as you don't go into the gearbox, just don't strip that apart. It's not actually too bad. This particular one, fix that hammer drill problem, hammer mode. You do have to strip down the gearbox. The good thing with D waltz is you can get all the parts. So inside this gearbox you can buy every single wee bearing and clip and gear, including this plastic housing. A massive downfall of this drill. That housing there is only plastic. And the hammer mode is literally two gears, two ramped gears that go over the top of each other. That's all the hammer mode is. It's not hammer mode or else. Rattle mode is all it is. You put on the, the rattle mode, the hammer mode, then wee gears get hot if you use another wide lot. Hot metal gear, plastic gearbox, just melts straight onto it. Once it melts in, you can't come back out again. You're stuck in hammer mode then permanently. You can buy this, costs about 20 or 25 quid. But the labour involved in stripping it all down and changing it, plus the fact that these chucks don't have a screw in them, you have to cut them off, that becomes a problem. Then you have to replace the chuck, then you're all the labour on changing this here part. Uh, it gets a wee bit expensive. These drills are quite cheap online. I've seen these on Amazon for about, what, £60 or something. So it's not really worth doing. But, hopefully, do a cheap job and just use a donor. Hopefully, anyway. Yeah, motor is good. So we'll do that. We'll open it and just swap them gearboxes around. It'll be alright with second hand chuck on it. That one should be alright, it's a wee bit rusted, but that'll do the job. This wee selector ring for the clutch, there's a wee, wee dent in it. That's for lining up with the screws. So you can actually take these gearbox screws out without interfering with that ring on the outside. I'm just working late here tonight, simply because there's a lot to do. There's a lot on here to be done, 
and I'm just not getting it done quick enough. And I'm sort of just not taking in more machines from online and TikTok and whatnot. Because there's just too many coming in. Need to focus on the regular customers. That's your gearbox. Most other brands that just comes as one complete kit. The Dewalt's different. But on the downside, the Dewalt, actually expensive, but. The motor is one complete kit. So battery retainer, switch, controller, motor, rotor, every single thing here. That's all one piece. Just like the Milwaukee one. So you can get everything inside of this handy enough. But that there is one solid piece, apart from the handle. Which is a bit useless to be quite honest. Because obviously switches eventually go. You've got a wee quick clean here. Of that one and get under this one. There's a scrap one, somebody didn't want back, the motor's gone on this one. And it'll help this fellow out. Tidier. Swap them around. Should be a straight swap. That's it. I know the other one looks a bit cleaner. Nah, there's not going to be an apprentice coming on. I saying, this one looks a lot cleaner now, I know, but these have serial numbers and all on it, so I keep the, I need to keep a record of what's coming through and what belongs to who. So I sort of need to leave the serial numbers the way they are. But now Apprentice, there's going to be no Apprentice. I'm working for a hardware shop. And this particular hardware shop is looking to take it easy.
they don't want to be taking on more work and more staff because owners are just getting tired basically getting old yeah I got the game screws out Better. They have a hardware shop here in Moval, and they were doing wholesale as well, and doing a lot of supplies to a lot of people. Different small businesses around the place, but they're starting to close accounts now and just keep it as a small hardware shop, so they're not looking to take on more stuff again. So it'll be just me doing the repairs. And I can't be taking on more repairs than I, than I can handle. Hammer. Let's drill only. I'll keep them going for a while longer. Save my wee bit of money. And that will just keep just in case. Need any other parts and maybe at a later date if I need to I can strip that down change, change the actual gearbox housing and have a spare one sitting that hand just in case I need to do it again that way I'll not have to have a second machine to strip it out strip down and repair or swap over you know so that's another one done Bosch multi tool. Nope. Nothing. There's only a green Bosch we DIY one. Repair the DIY ones as well. But they're a wee bit harder to get they're worth it. Generally they can be. Generally they're too cheap to buy. They're not worth fixing. It has to be a fairly simple repair for them to be worth doing. Not much to them when you look at it. Same idea as all multi tools. You'll have an armature or a motor. The armature and the armature then is going to have some sort of shaft with a bearing on the end of it. It'll be off centered. So as that shaft rotates, bearing goes round, 
And so it's going back and forth because it's on a tape and it's on a soft center. That's just on a shaft then. As it goes up and down, turns this shaft just a little bit. That's all the blade's doing, just turning back and forth a few millimetres. Fairly simple machines. Noisy as hell. Troublesome as well. Because they're vibrating, vibration, copper windings, they eventually work harden and break. Break leads, different cables inside the machine. So they do give problems, doesn't matter which brand. Question is what's wrong with this one? I should have started with this thing as it's only a DIY one. I never actually normally che check the fuse because most tradesmen will just check it then with themselves. The lead's okay. Is this going to be worth me pulling all this out? Just want to get on to check that switch. I uh, just took it apart. Let's check the brushes. Brushes are down here. You can see them moving back and forth along with the rotor. So you know they're okay. Switch here. What is the contacts for it? That's giving me nothing. It might just be the switch. Like I say, it needs to be a cheap one or nothing. Hopefully, that's all it is. Give us a quick clean first. Most of these switches like this will get some kind of trouble. You get to these in the same as the Makita miter saw and all for turning on the wee lasers or lights. Most miter saws switch like that. Or some wee trimmers and that. Dust, sawdust, this is white dust and this was probably plasterboard. Kills these machines. It just fills up with plasterboard dust and gets onto all the contacts and say these switches hopefully a contact cleaner might cure it you hear that tone change in there now Might be all it is. That's all it can be. I hope you can do with it to be honest, because if it's any more than that switch, it'll not be worth changing this wee board. You'd probably buy the machine for that money.
I went and moved there, which I really didn't want to do. together the sense wire sits down on here make sure that's on again Green bars can generally be more ha hassle than they're worth. That's better. everything should be up Hopefully. Nope. Still night. So that wee board's probably gone. Nah. That was not going to be fixed then. One not done. Now they're just going to be a quick and easy fix or nothing. one somebody left on today somebody left on four of these actually these are the screw fix brand uber tools four batteries and well four batteries left on i also left a charge of them on i've checked three of them three of them aren't fixed that's just the last one i'll give them a quick look before i leave them out Got. Sixteen volts. I think that could be jumped. Yeah, she's she's rough looking. What is all that? Look at that. Jesus, they're cheap. 
I'm sort of making a case to hold the batteries. I've just got a cheap plastic case. And I've just put a bit of elastic on the bottom. Take the shape of the cells. That's a cheap way of doing it. Right, there's water damage in this too. Uh, we bars 12 volt. If the hammer's not coming on, same thing. The grease has probably come off the worn away off the piston. Try open her up a wee bit and see if you can get a bit of grease into the hammer section. See if that helps it. If not, you'll have to do a strip down. Strip down and change out either the piston. Hopefully maybe just the o-ring and the grease. Now this one's not looking healthy. Yeah, these are the cells themselves, plus a negative, 20.7 volts on the cells themselves, only 16 off the contacts. In other words, that PCB board is actually gone. So I picked up something that doesn't light. And it's shut down. In other words, it cannot be fixed. Same as the other ones. Whatever I just did there, change something. That's a funny one. Like that. No, that's actually reading 20 volts. Well, the problem is on that we we LED indicator. I have to check them other ones as well. Maybe that's where it's picking up the fault. See that the rest of the battery still doesn't look very good. Test that now and see if it actually charges up. It's the charger that gives the final verdict. It doesn't charge on its actual charger. It's not repaired. See what I mean? No, it's not showing the lights. Yeah, back to the same thing. Leave that for now. Might have another wee juke at that tomorrow. You think I do anything? So we may switch in over one of the LED indicators, see if that makes any difference. Check the connections on them.
Actually, not a cookie. Note. First thing's always the brushes and these. First thing to change or to check. Oh, these brush caps are so long. That could be the problem there. Sticking brush. Old Hitachi tools. This type of Hitachi tool here. What year is this one? 2017 I think it is. Or what you would call crap. Is that there green colour one? That too bright a green or something, it's not, it's not a good colour of green. And they have all those sort of patterns on it and shapes. They were crap, to be honest. They were never very good. They were very cheap, especially the grinders, the quartered grinders. You buy a 9 inch and a 4.5 for less than 150 euro. And you got a good bit of use out of them, like, but when they broke in, Generally the parts are more expensive than the machine, no matter what you're fixing, even changing the leading brushes on them are just too expensive. Older Hitachi ones I wouldn't be a fan of. Hitachi is now called Hikoki. Hikoki seem to have really upped their game. They are putting a lot of effort onto their tools now. Nail guns to name one to name but one. The nail guns are brilliant. You got a brush that's just sticking. If you're not sure what's wrong, you think it you think it's the brush, but you're not sure. Take them out, give them a wee file so that they're a bit more free in the holder. Put them back in again and try them. Could just be a bit of dirt. Stopping the brush from getting to the commutator on the armature. A lot freer now. These older grinders, same as the Makita. So I have to watch, watch when you're repairing them because most people get too used to them, especially these brushed ones. They overuse them for everything. They start getting a lot of work. Brush motors get hot. These run very fast. You can overheat them very easily. Motors then start to work harden. Copper gets more resistance, and then the more you're using them, the faster they're yet they're getting hot. So they're more inclined to burn out. So when you get them in for a pair, you really need to be sure the the motors are all right on them. Because they're that small, you can't really test them either. You end up spending money on a machine, and then the motor being gone anyway. Or the motor seemed to be okay and the customer was away with it and comes back a few days later saying it's burnt out because I want to use it like normal but it's not like a new machine it's still just a used one with the motor heating them up you have to be careful with them when you're fixing them and that's it doesn't really matter about that one cheap fix File and a wee rub with the set with the file, clean the brushes a wee bit, up and running again. I think about them old Hitachi grinders when you did buy them new. 
If you looked after them, they did do their job. Especially four and a half inch. They were so cheap to buy. But if you did, did keep an eye on them, then that didn't get them too bad. It lasted quite a bit of time, to be quite honest. Well, that's another one fixed in now. One on pair, so as well do the pair. Older one again, brushed version. and see the same thing. Leave it both. When you give them a bit of use, they shouldn't get overly hot. That's only what, a couple of seconds on them. I can't tell how hot that is with my fingers. I'll just stick it down there. So that's cool. That one's hot. So, one's going on grand, one's not. That heat. You can see the wear on them as well, actually. See, one's bigger than the other one. See that? On the ends as well. See where this one's all putted. Much rougher. This one's nice and sharp and smooth. So that one's making contact with the rotor. It's running across it, no problem, just rubbing the whole time. This one's not. So this one's just sticking and just just not getting the whole way to the rotor. It's just a tiny, tiny wee gap. Because there's a gap, the electricity is not passing through. It's arcing across. There'll be a wee blue flash in there. Because it's only an 18 volt drill, a wee tiny motor, you'll not see the flash from the outside. But that'll be arcing on, and that's what that putting is. That's the arc actually eating away the brushes. And it also does the same thing on the rotor, heating that up. But because it's arcing, that one brush gets hotter than the other one. So that one's fine, that one's hot. That means these here are sticking on the holders as well. And this would be a fairly common one for the Hitachi stuff, for these brush drills. Really very little meat on the plastic. And these wee brass holders as well. See the play in that now. There's not an awful lot holding them on. I'd actually contact with that wee plastic ring. Be fairly small. There's just not enough heat dissipation to take the heat away from them brushes. And you can change that holder as well if you want. But change the holder on the brushes, you're on to about 40 or 50 quid just for that. To be honest, it's not really worth it. Five or ten euro. Clean out these here brushes. Give them a wee file. No, not give them a wee file. There's the main problem. The one's got too much heat. She's actually broken. So that's the main reasons why she's very tight. We hairline crack running up. She wants expanded as well. So those brushes are actually gone on that.
just replace the brushes all together. Tiny wee set of brushes, actually 12 euro to buy the bloody things. They're running a lot more free as well, and because they're longer and there's no heat on them as well, the springs are a wee bit tighter. So in the long run, probably will help with that motor. Yeah, it's nice and free. See the flash down there? That's just the brake. That flash only comes on whenever you release the trigger. It's actually a good sign, it means the motor's still nice and sharp. That's her. As long as you don't see that flash when the thing's running, you're good. Right, that's another one done. More of a headache. A headache, exactly. Two cleaners, an earlier man left on. Oh, they are rough. Marksman. Cheap and cheerful. Yeah. He says they stick a new set of blades in them there. There, disposable planer blades. They are solid carbide blades. Or high speed blades actually. So yeah. Can't fit a disposable blade to that. Well, that's not going to be happening. Sounds all right otherwise. But I have no way of getting blades for that thing. The only ones I'm going to have is either a old Makita or Itachi blades and they're going to cost a fortune you wouldn't be putting that onto a cheap planer so that's a no there's actually two different models too two different mix actually good brand Electric cleaner. Good job. At least this one has disposable blades. The reason it doesn't change in the begin with. It's got a big. I don't imagine that there. The connector inside. Uh, I can't put that. I can't fix a machine on here. And send it out with a break in the lead if there's wires showing somewhere. Lead tipped up with electrical tip. It's too dangerous. I can't say it's electrically safe and give it out to somebody in the public. I'm then liable, so I have to change the lead. <laughs> yeah. Just fit new blades on them, that's all you, I want, just new blades on them. New blades on them. 
blades ain't gonna cure a broken belt. Nope, wrong side. Uh, how far do you go with this one? So it's a lead it needs and a belt. The chances of me having one of these belts is slim to none. And again, problem is if I do have one, it's going to be a name brand one, like a Makita or a Bosch or a Dewalt or something. It'll not be a wee cheap and cheerful belt. It'll be an expensive belt. Could be a tenner, could be twenty quid. Depends if I have one, what price it is. So that's going to be at least. 10 or 15 euro. Another 15 euro to change the lead on it. Change the blades. Another tenner. Run the 40 quad straight away. This thing probably costs 40 euro. So I'm afraid this is just a non start. It's just not worth fixing. Unless he wants to find a belt himself, I'm just going to shove that in there. Away from the motor. So if you can match one up, the original belt's still on it. So again, that's not fixed, not going to be fixed, just not worth it. Sadly. Well not sadly, it's not really cheap and cheerful machine anyway. Leave that aside. Key does this time. Batteries, batteries, batteries. Doing note. Brushes are melted under the holder. You can see that armature wiggling around. These brushes aren't touching it. You can just see just down on there. And we two pieces of plastic sticking out on top of the brush. That is actually the plastic from this holder. So the brush has got hot, heated up the copper holder. That copper holder is still only held on the plastic. So this one has got hot enough to melt the plastic through. That's now melted into the brush, jamming it in place. That's not going to work with that. The brush holder and brushes need to be changed. This is the 458 drill, the Makita. This is the older heavy duty drill. The older brushed motor. Good drill to wear. I actually have three or four of these myself. I think they're a great drill. But you need to know it's a brushed motor. My little boys now that used to brushless stuff, they just dog it on as much as they want. But when you do it to a brush machine, they tend to forget this builds up a lot of heat because it's a brushed motor. 
and that needs an armature too. That armature's cooked. Melted the weave tabs so the fan and everything. Yeah. It's been rubbing on the field. Yeah, field is a bit weak, but you can maybe get away with it. Alright. I have to price that one up and give the person a ring. See if they want to fix it. Some places have that particular model now, quite cheap. Stick a new motor brush ring into that there. They're looking at about, about 60 or 70 euro. I don't know now, that's only what? Well, it's 2016. I'd replace it myself. I wouldn't put 70 euro onto a motor, but some people want to. At the end of the day, gearboxes give very little trouble. Switches give very little bother in that particular model. Put a new motor onto it. You're left with a new drill. A new motor, like, very little to go wrong. But, if you can buy a new machine for the same money as the motor, it makes no sense at all. Everybody's favourite, the Makita grinder. This is the brushed version again. Sound and a wee bit underpowered. So I'd imagine this is going to be the same story. And it is. That's the brush ring. Or the brush holder, so the brush cap. You know, I see the melt plastic's actually melted out on top of it. So, them brushes and holders are gone also. Yeah. Completely melted. So he would have been using that, holding that in his hand, and that melt plastic melting through there, and he's wondering what's wrong with it. You would have felt that heat like you wouldn't have been able to hold that it would have been so hot some people know what they're doing they just don't care maybe it's a job you just had to get finished and you're just dodging it on because you had to but you know that motor's gone Uh, motor is gone. It's not worth fixing that. You can see by the colour of the combar, like that purpley colour, that's heat. Like I said before, copper and heat work hard into copper. Once you work hard enough, the resistance goes up. Higher resistance in the windings means it takes more current to push the power through it. That extra current heats everything up. Extra heat again. Never ending circle, just keeps getting hotter faster and faster and faster until it burns out. So you can see there as well the actual lacquer on that copper wire is burnt. So that is gone. That's not going to be worth fixing. You can pry them probably for about a hundred euro now on Amazon. Wouldn't be worth putting a motor on that thing. Box that up and give him the good news. The grinders go, unless you're doing extremely light use, you wouldn't buy a brush grinder now. When 
comes to power tools. Difference between brushed and brushless. And a drill or something you wouldn't really notice it a while lot. Bit of extra speed, bit of extra sharpness out of the motor. But when it's a grinder, the difference is night and day. Brush grinder's grand, does the job, but a brushless grinder, way more power, way more speed, way faster to use. No comp there's no comparison there. But it wants to know why. That's a universal universal motor. Brushed motor. Takes a brush ring and brushes the rod. So some models have four brushes, some have two. Electricity comes on. Generally if it's a two brush motor, two brushes either side. Electricity comes on. Over to one brush and to one side of the com bar through the windings inside and out the other side and to the other brush. That's what's happening. And that copper goes on. Steel laminates inside the armature. Energize this here segment here, these windings, so this will become a magnet. This is also a magnet. This is a permanent magnet so once these magnets line up negative negative north and south north to north they repel each other as it's repelled it's going to be turned away once it's turned away so if that segment here is energized the magnet repelled it because it is now, this turns into a magnet the thing turns this one's now not energized, the next one becomes energized. So in this one it becomes a magnet, gets repelled, this one becomes a magnet, gets repelled, and it keeps going and going and going. So the more it turns, these com bars are actually energizing different segments. So that's what a brush motor's doing. The brushes have to be contacting the rotor to transfer the electricity to energize each segment. On a brushless machine, is the opposite way around. The permanent magnet is the rotor, the spinning bit inside. So inside of this one, this rotor is just a permanent magnet. There's no windings, there's no contacts on it at all. The field itself, this part inside this machine, is where the windings are. So inside, them windings will be around the field itself. And to switch the magnetic field on each segment of the field is a computer that runs it. So this computer will tell different segments to energize, to repel this magnet, energize the next one, repel it, energize the next one, repel it. In the back of this field then, there'll be a Hall effect sensors. We sensors that pick up ma magnetism, so they know exactly what rotation this rotor is at. So the computer can actually tell what segment to energize and which order, get maximum power, torque, whatever out of it. So there's actually no contact whatsoever between the rotor and the windings inside. No brushes at all. What's causing them to change polarity, change to energize different segments, is the switch itself. And this version anyway, switch. So the actual controller inside this will be telling what segment of the field to energize. That's the difference between a brushed and a brushless motor. Brushless motor is a lot more complicated. In general, with most brands, that's how they come. One solid piece. Rotor, field, stator, controller, switch, battery contacts, all the wiring. One solid piece. Anything goes wrong, throw it all away. Brush motors, you got a switch, contact, field, brushes, brush holders, bodies, they're all separate generally. But because they're making contact, they generate a lot more heat. That extra heat eventually kills the rotor, 
kills the machine, especially if it's overworked. You get more time out of a brush machine if it's looked after. A brushless machine just takes one component and say the controller to fail, that's it, gone. Certain brands are better than other ones. Makita, Heikoki, Metabo, generally they will sell the motors as different segments, different pieces, so the field will be separate, the rotor will be separate, switch, controller, they can all buy individual pieces. It doesn't really matter, the main thing that goes in a brushless, mach brushless machine is the controller. Once the controller goes, that's it, it's not going to be worth fixing. The controllers are generally the same price as a new machine. So it's just if you're wondering what's the difference in them, that is it. Brushless, brushless machine is brushless, there's no contact, Contru computer runs it. Brush machine energizes each segment, the brush is touching. More simple, more reliable. See what else I can pull in here now. More drills, more drills, more drills. I get nervous when I hear them do that. Use a cheaper battery, not the big expensive flex volt. Deal. He's not running anyway. I think I'll find the problem. Busted housing. So was that just jammed? Sweet. So that can be fixed. This part's good, that's the motor. Back to the one we had prepared earlier. Ah, cheers, glad, glad you enjoy it. Thoughts on Dewalt? I find Dewalt quite good for most stuff. Not the best in the world, but why a lot of people compared Dewalt in Milwaukee. Milwaukee comes out in the bottom every time for me. Dewalt, I find far better than Milwaukee. It's not going to be the best. Still, certain tools are better than them. Nobody makes the perfect brand. Nobody makes all good tools. They've all got lemons. They've all got flagship machines. 
Dewalt generally, miter saw, stuff like that. Brilliant. For other 18 volt stuff, I would recommend Dewalt as well as Makita. Simply because Dewalt have a lot of stuff. It's a good 18 volt platform and have a good big range of machines. A lot of brushless stuff too. I'm keeping up to date with the stuff, that's what I like about them. You do get more Dewalt in for a pair, definitely. But generally, Dewalt can be repaired more than some of the other stuff. They're good enough for it. If you're buying Dewalt stuff, buy brushless, register them online, you will not look back. So, I don't need that. I need these. So as you can see, that housing's totally smashed. So that chuck was bad. This chuck should hopefully be good. That was changed before. What the hell is going on there? What the? Let me torch go. God knows where it went. No, oh, there it is. Yeah, sorry. Chuck was changed before. So there's a taper on the bottom and a hole for a screw. These Dewalt drills don't actually have a screw in them. No, don't be setting up any more tools. Definitely don't be setting up healthy stuff and getting out of the healthy repairs. Healthy is just becoming too much hassle, to be quite honest. So there's some stuff I'll still look at, but not a lot. And at the minute, there's that many machines in here. I'm not taking on anymore. Especially, at least like get rid of this backlog. One more. Housing's alright. It's the main thing we want to make sure. For me, why I like the old stuff is actually for that housing there. We can see it now because it's smashed. The re plastic teeth down here that locate onto this, and that's for selecting one of your speeds. So whenever that gear ring there is fixed, the gears on the inside run around this, that gives you your second speed. When you start getting a, one of the gears that's slipping, normally the second, that's because that gear is not locking on, she's spinning because we teeth. On this plastic housing wear out. It's only Dewalt and Hikoki. So thanks for that there. Thank you. Yeah. Really appreciate that for. Thank you very much. Only Dewalt and Hikoki, and I think Matabo as well. You can actually buy that part. Some of the old Makitas you could, not anymore. Everything else, one solid piece. The whole gearbox. So that's one of the reasons I do actually like Dewalt. You can buy a separate component on the drill. So that's a common problem for any brand, a stripped gear. The gears don't actually strip, it's this housing that strips out. The gear that's meant to lock in is always metal. That never gets damaged. It's this housing. So if that goes, you can just open up your gearbox, pull everything out, replace that part, and get your drill up and running again. That's what I like about Dewalt. There's not many brands still doing that. And Hikoki as well, I'm starting to do it as well. So that's why I'm starting to like Hikoki stuff. I'm very much let down by the Makita. Makita stuff, not doing it anymore. So if a gearbox goes to Makita, you're buying a new gearbox. 
they're out half the price of the machine. That's the way they're going. But for performance wise and longevity, the Makitas do tend to run a wee bit longer. Hopefully don't need an eye up, just throw it in the bag just in case I do. Now, try to take this one apart a wee bit more carefully. Get your change lever. It's going to give us a quick wee clean. This one done and head on. Give it a clean so I can see what I'm doing. Give that a twist. That plastic part pops off. Metal ring. It's great to see boys just dumping them out onto their hand and just sticking them back in again. Never works out like that in reality. Take them out bit by bit. Can't actually put these back together wrong. Can only go on one way. So don't be daunted by which one goes where. You know how to how to know this one doesn't go on in there. This bigger gear will not mesh up with these smaller gears inside. It's only going to be that one that fits in there. And it's only going to be these gears that fit onto these ones. These ones won't fit onto there, onto a smaller ring. Only one way they can go on, and that's the right way. Might be a wee bit of fiddling about, but they will go on. Now, that should be as far as I need to go. Phillips one screw, so I'll have to use the hand method. It's the same drill as well, same gearbox. So it's a straight swap over. If you weren't watching earlier, I included on another one of these drills. I just replaced the whole gearbox because it was stuck in hammer mode. So the bottom half of this is in jammed on hammer mode now this whole gearbox head will have to be changed so instead of replacing the whole lot I'm just going to replace this housing so this part sorry this is the one that's stuck in hammer mode not that one this one's jammed on hammer so this part's still good this back end so I'll just use this part Probably do have this part on stock as well, but because that was smashed, there's no telling if something else is missing. So it's safer just to replace. 
That's fucking broke too, look at that. Is it? No, sorry, it's not. The screws are just off centre. I took out one too many. One too many there too. That's what do we need to take out of it? That goes on there. So it slips on over the top, hopefully. Then it'll get screwed back together again. Can be a wee bit finickety. But it's all doable. Yeah, maybe doing more lives th like this here if I'm working late. But because I don't know when that'll be, I can't really put a time frame on it. I can only just do a live whenever I'm actually in working lit. I can only do that when I have free time between work and other commitments, so I can just never give an exact time frame on it. And like I was saying about these teeth wearing out, why I like these Dewalt rolls. That ring there that I changed on this particular model. Then we teeth that wear out are actually metal as well, separate from this, from the Dewalt. Most other brands, this plastic housing has this attached to the bottom. And it's a piece of plastic. So this Dewalt one, even though it's a wee cheap and cheerful drill, that's actually metal. So there are your teeth down in here. That should be planetary gear that locks. There's one that just selectors actually hooked onto. It slides in here. There's one that's actually raising up and down. So that's that's on there. These gears go on top. I'll put a wee bit of grease on now. And that's all I put on. Little dab. These things take very little grease and if you over grease them, that grease is generally just going to come out the sides in on it. Leak out through the back of the gearbox and onto the motor and just make a big mess. Generally, it depends what brand. There's the problem, not on it. Some of them 
the actual gear that wears out. The bearing that's going in the gearbox that causes the wobble. Some of them it's an actual bearing, some of them it's like two cup washers with ball bearings on top. Can re put them back together again, but it's a wild finicky. And if the chuck's gone as well, generally that's gonna be more worthwhile replacing the drill to be quite honest. This has to go in. Right spot. And I can never remember which. Nope. That's it. Sorry if I'm missing any comments here. I'm just not seeing the screen the entire time. On there, that's that's on top, and we twist that your gearbox back together again. This we selector just drops on, make sure I'm the right way up. This we arrows the top of the gearbox, so one side slips in there. One side's on there. That's that. So that we broken draw come on quite handy tonight. Also, it could be in trouble. That is this part here of the old drill. It's welded itself onto the fan. Too bad. Should get away with that. Only one way to find out. Motor's just not setting in right. Might be it now. That's better. Look 
I'm good so far. Screws are so easy to strip out. Sir. <laughs> That's it. One fixed drill with a repaired gearbox. It's got a little scrap on. It's giving us a motor housing. An actual gearbox housing on as well. This one's actually repaired two machines. That's another one fixed in it. Throttle's not working. Batteries to be checked too. Sixteen is a bit low. That was a very big sticker to put on. It's a fresh battery. It has water damage. You see down in there. A wee bit of green coming through. These cells are generally put on very tight and there's nowhere to get your hand on to actually pull them out. So sure I have to just give them a wee tap to get them down. I'm just hitting here and hitting here, just giving it a wee tap. Cut them cells at all. Screwdrivers are a no-no. Don't be sticking anything in there and try to prise it up underneath that purple plastic. That is the neutral side of the battery. Do not be shoving anything metal on. Yeah. 
What do you think? Because the battery below, depends on the tool you're using as well, it can be the conditions of the cells. So this one's 16 volts. Why is the voltage low? What causes it? Different things, but when looking at batteries, I generally take them apart to look at them. You see videos of spiking them and that. You can spike them. That's grand. Sometimes works fair enough. Spiking can be dangerous for the very simple reason I'll show you now. That's why I always use the wee IMAX B6 charger for spiking the batteries. That can pick up if there's anything on toward and stop it for you. So this battery is putting out 16.4 volts. Alright. Too low to charge. Spike it, get it back up to 18 volts. Stick it on the charger again. Sounds great. What do you see when you test it? Start at this end. So it's 4.9. I'm going to test each row of cells here. Five rows of cells. Two series. Okay. So every one of these two batteries is connected. One on top of the other. That gives you the five amps. Fives together then. Five of them rows together gives it 18 volts. So each one of these two rows should be around 4 volts. 4.2 when fully charged. 4.2 when fully charged. Do you hear what I'm saying? 4.8. So that one's fully charged, that's 4. 4.8 1 volt 0 volts so that's where the danger starts there when you go to spike your battery you're forcing the 18 volts and if you take a fully charged battery that's 20 volts when it's fully charged once you start using it it drops down to 18 fully charged is 20 volts Lithium cells, as I always say, are dangerous. If they go over voltage, they can go into thermal runaway, and then they'll start generating their own heat, getting hotter and hotter and hotter, till they literally self-ignite. You cannot stop it once they go into thermal runaway. That happens when they're over-voltaged. Too much voltage goes onto them. So if I were to take that now, dangerous, dangerous as it may be, some boys actually take these. i seen a video the other night, somebody took two coins, Shove two coins into here and stuck the two batteries together to boost it. Jesus, is that dangerous, eh? Boosting, you're just touching the touching the contacts, getting a little bit of current at a time. You don't keep them connected at all. So this one here, you're to boost it now. Stick your battery onto it. Start putting 20 volts onto it. Your 20 volts to get on. You're assuming that these are all working. These are all you're assuming they're all under voltage at like three volts. What you're actually doing is you're putting extra volts into these three batteries, these three cells. This first one zero. They're dead. They're not taking any voltage. You stick it in the charger. It realizes that there straight away. If I stick this in the IMAX charger now, start charging, that comes up straight away. Something's seriously not right. Won't charge it for me. Gone. I stick another battery onto this. Another 18 volts, hook it up. That voltage is definitely going to go into the battery. But it's not going into these five rows of cells. It's not going into the first one. The second one, 1.4 volts of even. Barely any is going into that. So your 20 volts is going into these three cells here, which then puts these over voltage, which this one already is. Which one was it now? Actually changed now, look. When I was reading five there, we will ago. 
So you put your 18 volts into that now. The M18 volts or 20 for a fully charged battery is only going into the M3 cells. Way too much current for them. So you're dividing 20 by 3. These fully charged should only be 4.2 maximum. Once they go over, they go over voltage. Once they're over voltage, they're volatile as hell. Anything can set them off. Once they're over voltage, they can go into thermal runaway, self-ignite, burn the thickened house down. Just type on lithium battery burning and you'll see what I mean. And somebody else actually pointed out to me on a private message, they're actually a battery safety officer. Forget about the fire. People have like things like electric scooters and we moped things in their house. Charge them in the house. If one of them goes up, even one of these batteries, it's not the fire that's going to kill you. It's the fumes that come out of this thing. These are toxic whenever they burn. They're deadly. Like The gas that comes out of these here will actually kill you. One of them scooters goes up inside your house and burns. The legal limit, the safe limit for that gas that is escaping is five times over. So you're probably already going to suffocate to death before you even realise there's a fire. Lithiums are serious dangerous. Don't fuck with them. And that's why you always open up the battery and check the cells. So this one, totally pointless. No point in fixing it. You're going to have to replace four cells straight away. And the other ones as well aren't balanced. And you're not getting a consistent reading at all. So that's totally dead. There's no point in hooking that up to anything or trying to boost it. It's gone, forget about it. As fresh as it may look on top, you can see the cells themselves. They're all bump bumpy, they're all rusted inside. Same as here. So they've either leaked, either one of these is leaked and corroded, or else they've got water somewhere, they've got damp, and they started to rust. Fair enough, you want to spike your batteries, lads, if you want to check them, but open them up and check them. Just be careful with the old ring, because if you were to stick metal on metal across that, you're going to short it out. All the power goes into your ring, heats it up like red hot fairly quick. No metal near them, they're fine to open. Use the right tools to open them, right screwdriver, don't shove anything metal on. Pull it out, have we luck, use a multimeter, test it. Everything's good and it's just under voltage, give it a wee spike. But if there's a bad cell, you're seeing rust like that, there's no point in fact try, trying to do anything with it. So that one's gone. And changing cells as well, rebuilding them. Especially these Dewalt ones, waste of time. Because these Dewalt, as you can see, are tight. Just no room for any air when you're rebuilding them. So these wee steel plates for joining them together, they're off at all. This thing just doesn't go back together. That's where a lot of time can be wasted too because it's a non-runner, it can't be fixed. It's not making you anything. We just have to waste time putting it all back together again. But obviously you can't send the battery back out in pieces. And that's a fire hazard. So the battery's gone. What's wrong with the drill? Oh, there we go. Doesn't work. Does work. That's just a brush ring. Brushes are worn out. 
worn out or burnt, the brushes aren't actually moving on their holder, so they're not actually touching the armature. Once you give it a slap, it vibrates them a wee bit, gives them a shock, they move a wee tiny bit. It's just enough to get the thing to run for a wee minute. Once they stop them, they're jammed up again, they don't move. So that's just a brush ring. That's an easy enough fix. No time for tonight to do it though, because it's getting lit and I have to get home. So, hope you've enjoyed watching. Hope you've learned something. Kept me a bit of company anyway, I'm here working lit. Glad to have you watching. Hope you're enjoying the channel by the way. I'll put more videos up now shortly, hopefully. Batteries in the, what is that? Art batteries in the hand luggage. You're allowed to take lithium batteries in hand luggage for one simple reason. You're not allowed to put them in the stowaway luggage because if they do go up on fire, you can get to them in the hand luggage. That's why you're allowed to carry them. That's the why you're allowed to, and that's the only reason why you're allowed to take lithium batteries on a plane. You have to carry them with you. Because if they do go up, you can get to it. If that there goes on to the storage luggage, one of them would accidentally go up on fire. There's nothing to put it out on a plane. Anyway lads, I'm going to call it a night here. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. Chat is all later.